What's up everybody, welcome back to another Marvel Snap video and today we are taking a look at an Orca deck, that's right, Orca. Uh, he's one of the cards that got downgraded to Series 3 recently. I didn't have him when he was at Series 4, uh, but I did unlock him recently. He's a 6 energy uh, card with 9 power with an ongoing effect, plus 5 power if this is your only card here. So kind of like a bigger version of Namor if he's the only card in his lane. He will be 14 power, which is a lot of power, to be honest. And uh, yeah, you know, when I saw this card, I thought, oh, it's kind of trash. And, um, you know, no, it's not the greatest card it's not the best card but it's a fun card because i feel like i've been catching people uh off guard with this card lately and it is a lot of fun so this is the deck i put together i'm gonna go through it real quick and then uh, show some gameplay with it so this is basically like an ongoing deck list the only cards we have in here that are not ongoing are nightcrawler and like Nightcrawler in this list because you can kind of move him around and he's really flexible, right? That's the that's the thing with this deck is it's it wants to be flexible. You want to contest all three locations, and Nightcrawler helps us do that by being flexible, being able to move him around. An interesting interaction is let's say you have Nightcrawler and Namor in the same lane. Well, Namor will go to uh, 11 power if he's by himself in a location and he's susceptible to Shang-Chi. But what you could do is you could put uh, Namor and and a Nightcrawler in the same lane, and then uh, Namor will stay at six power, which is outside of Shang-Chi range. And then at the end of the game, you can move the Nightcrawler somewhere else to where Namor is alone and gets that plus five buff. So I like Nightcrawler in here. I think he's just a really flexible card. And then the other uh, card that's not ongoing is Spectrum, which is kind of uh, one of our big payoff finishers, right? Which is uh, on reveal, give your ongoing cards plus two power. So we have two finishers in this deck, one being Spectrum, which buffs all our ongoing cards and uh, it lets us go wide, which lets us put points across the board in multiple locations. Or we have Orca, which is just a big body we can slam down on the last turn of the game. So I really like these guys in this deck list. We have Ant-Man, and uh, I got to flex this uh, this inked crackle I got real quick. This is the first crackle effect I've ever gotten, and uh, it's fitting that it's for Ant-Man because he's one of my favorite characters, but I digress. Ant-Man is just the best uh, one-cost ongoing card in the game, and we have Armor, Colossus, Lizard, just good ongoing cards to play. Um, the one thing I would say is Colossus is kind of kind of like yeah, hit or miss. You know, He's not great. Um, but he can be good in some locations like Jotunheim where uh, your cards get minus one power each turn or like sewer system cards have minus one power here. So he's good for those locations. He's also good for uh, locations where cards can get destroyed. So since he cannot be destroyed, so he can be hit or miss, but he does get buffed by Spectrum, which is nice. One card I was considering slotting in here was Cloak. Cloak is kind of similar to Nightcrawler in the way that we can kind of move our cards around a little bit, right? Sometimes your opponent will put junk on your side of the board like rocks or goblins and that might mess if you're in Namor or your Orca. So Cloak definitely could be a consideration to kind of move those cards around so we can get our big guys buff activated. Mr. Fantastic, again, helps us contest all three locations on the board. Osmo is a uh, uh, low-key MVP in this deck. I mean, he just stops so many on reveal nonsense shenanigans that are going on the only on reveal card we have in this deck is spectrum so just make sure you don't play spectrum and cosmo in the same lane but a really good ongoing tech card and then we have namor namor was recently buffed from a four five to a four six so if he has his ongoing effect plus five if he's the only card here he is going to go to a four eleven which is a lot a lot of power if he activates this ability i believe he's actually the highest power four cost card in the game so uh really Really, really like him and then we have claw claw is another kind of mvp in this deck list one because again he's allowing us to be flexible and contest to multiple locations but also with his effect he can feed power into a location that has no more or orca in that location so if we have Namor or Orca to the right of Claw, uh, sometimes your opponent might not expect the Claw. They might not expect that extra six power. It can ca catch them off guard a little bit. So Claw, I really do like in this deck list as well. And then we have Sandman, you know? 
I used to be a big fan of Sandman. I wasn't so much of a fan of Sandman after he went to a five energy card, but I, I like him in this deck list because this card, once you get to turn five and turn six, I mean, usually you're playing one card per turn at the end of the game. It's either Spectrum or Orca, right? That's usually what you're doing. Maybe sometimes you'll play Claw plus like a one cost card or something like that, or maybe like Namor plus a two cost card. But most of the time, you're usually just gonna play Spectrum or Orca on the final turn of the game. So Sandman helps uh, alleviate that pain against other decks that like to play multiple cards per turn on the last turn of the game, like Sarah decks uh, for one, Mr. Negative decks, things like that. Now, I really like him uh, currently for the hot location, which is Elysium. One, uh, all cards cost one less. So I think he's really good for this hot location at the moment, but you definitely can swap him out. Um, two other cards I was considering was actually Iron Man. Iron Man is a, just a really good ongoing card, right? And with the Spectrum buff, he can get to some uh, insane power at his location. Uh, but another one that I was actually thinking about adding, and I did have him in this deck a little bit, but I ended up swapping out to Sandman, and I think the Sandman has been working better, at least for this hot location. But another one is actually Red Skull, because with the Red Skull change, it was technically a buff, right? Because before he was 515 and then his ongoing ability used to be enemy cards of this location have plus two power. So if your opponent had four cards there, it would give your opponent plus eight power essentially for, for a net positive of seven points for you. But now with his new ability, he's 13 power, enemy cards at this location have plus one power. So if your opponent has four cards at his opposing location, uh, it's gonna give you a net of nine power. So a five nine is still a decent stat line, plus his effect is ongoing, so he can get buffed by Spectrum. So I actually really like Red Skull on this list as well. Uh, you definitely could swap him out for the Sandman if you would like. I would highly recommend keeping Claw on here though. I, I would not take out Claw. Claw is very, very good in this deck list. Uh, but yeah, Sandman I think is flexible. Colossus I think is flexible. The rest of the deck list is pretty solid for the most part. Uh, I really like it. Again, not a top tier meta deck by any means, but you know. But yeah, that is the deck list. Hope you guys enjoy this deck. It's super, super fun. If you have recently unlocked Orca and you're thinking, oh, this card is just trash. Well, try this deck out. See how it works for you. And uh, yeah, it can be really fun. So let's get into the gameplay. All right, here we got the Bifrost. And we have Colossus in hand, which maybe that'll come into play since uh, Colossus can't be moved by the Bifrost. But we got Tinkerer's Workshop. Uh, I think it's safe to just kind of throw Lizard down. Let's throw Lizard down in the middle. Seems like a, a safe play here. And we got a Squirrel Girl and a Carnage. So probably a Death Wave deck. I really like the Squirrel Girl variant. I don't have any variants for Squirrel Girl. Necrotia. See, there we go. Now we got a good location for our losses here we want to play armor we have priority we have priorities here so i think we want to do armor ant-man armor ant-man oh i guess i should have armored the necrotia then he's probably gonna play something yeah death lock okay okay and we got colossus sandman orca spectrum so probably what we're gonna do is we'll throw throw colossus and necrotia and then I guess we're playing Sandman. Unless maybe we draw Claw, there may be a consideration to play Claw. But he might he might wave so you can do like She-Hulk and Death or something. So maybe Sandman is the move here. Oh, we did draw no more. We did draw no more. We could do no more in the middle and then like work on the left. That might be good. Maybe maybe we do the Namor play then. Maybe we do the Namor. Actually, I'm going to do Namor over here on the left. Because we could potentially do like Claw in the middle to feed into Necrotia. Just gives us an option to uh, keep open. There is a She-Hulk. There is a She-Hulk. So we could do Spectrum. So there's no, there's no wave. There's no wave. He did destroy two cards. Or I guess technically three because Carnage, Deathlock, Yondu. So death is six. Death is six. So he could play death. But he can't do... We could do Spectrum. That's going to buff 
That's going to buff all our cards, actually. But then we lose the middle. Or we could just slam Orca. And we take the middle. Maybe we just slam Orca down. Maybe we just slam the Orca. Oh, he's playing in the right. Doctor Doom. Not enough. Okay, so it was like a Doom Death Wave deck in the more and Orca holding it down. Good game. Wow. Ant-Man is usually safe to play in the middle location if I'm not sure where to play him because we're going to want to play Mr. Fantastic in the middle location anyways. So I do like playing Ant-Man in the middle here. Comertage is going to be good for our Spectrum or we might just want to deny it with uh, Cosmo if we draw a Cosmo. And we do get Elysium, which is the hot location for the day. So let's just go ahead and throw Mr. Fantastic in there. And uh, we can hold on to the Nightcrawler for now. I think that would be fine. And our opponent just slams down Patriot. Okay, so Patriot deck right off the bat. Oh, and it's District X. Yo, we get two Nemours though. <laughs> what the? Two Nemours? Okay. Well... What we can do is, uh, like I said, I kind of like this interaction is where we could do Namor, Nightcrawler, and uh, Namor will be safe from Shang-Chi, and we can move uh, Nightcrawler later on in the game. And he does have the Mystique in his hand. Kind of unfortunate we got District X, though. I'm always trying to showcase a deck, and then, uh, yeah, we just, we just get District X, which is not fun now we do have we do we drew cosmo from district x that's actually kind of nice i think i'm gonna play the other no more in the middle for now um amortage debris that's really annoying okay well this no more can't get the buff uh anymore let's snap let's just do spectrum now let's just do spectrum now And we got a Lockjaw Blade. Oh, wow. And our opponent had a Rogue. And Shang-Chi. Okay, that's really bad for them. Oh, wait. They pulled a Black Panther because of District X. Okay. Well, that is uh, that is something. That is something. Can we win this location? I don't think we can win Comertage. Yeah, I think this guy knows that he lost. I guess we just play the Chavez over in the in the right. That's probably what we do. And empty. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, an interesting game, but uh, we came out with the victory. All right, let's go ahead and play our Nightcrawler onto Onslaught Citadel. Onslaught Citadel, very good for my deck list because I have a lot of ongoing cards. And we're actually playing a Thanos deck. I have not seen a lot of people playing Thanos anymore, actually. So let's do Lizard. Let's do Lizard in the middle, and then we can do Mr. Fantastic in the middle next turn. I think I like that play. Face Stone and Reality Stone. Icebox is going to give our Claw plus one cost. That kind of sucks, but at least it wasn't Mr. Fantastic, I suppose. So yeah, we'll still play Mr. Fantastic in the middle here. Onto Xandar. You could play him in Onslaught Citadel, but I still like playing him on, uh, in the middle onto Xandar to uh, get get points across all three locations and help us keep priority as well. So we got a Soul Stone. Oh, Soul Stone in Onslaught Citadel is actually going to be really bad. What you might want to do is if we draw no more or Orca, probably just play it into Onslaught Citadel because the more cards we play in here, the more value the Soul Stone is going to get. So it might be better to just play one card in here. Uh, we could also do Claw in there. It kind of sucks that he got his cost bumped up by one. Did draw Sandman. Let's go ahead and do... Do I want to do Ant-Man, Armor? Well, we want to do him in the same lane, right? But I don't want to fill up this lane, I don't think. I don't, I don't want to fill it up yet, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to throw him on the right lane to kind of keep our options uh, open. I don't want to uh, clog up this lane too late. Oh my god, a Professor X out of nowhere. I was not expecting that. Okay, 
Well, our nightcrawler is a. Uh, our nightcrawler is just stuck there. Our nightcrawler is going to be stuck there then. Maybe we just do Sandman, huh? Has he played all six stones yet? One, two, three, four, five. Neighborhood Spider Man here. Spider Man. Oh, wow. So this is like a location lockdown, huh? So he did play all the stones. We can't play Claw in the middle anymore because of the Spider Man. That really hurts us. So, really, our only play is Orca on the right, but that's really not. If, if, he, has, if he has Thanos, we just lose. So, I guess it just depends on if he has Thanos or not. And yeah, he probably has it. A 30. Wait. 30 point Thanos. Oh my god. Oh, because the Onslaught Citadel. Jeez. This deck just absolutely destroyed me. <laughs> Alright, so we get the Kiln, which is actually really good for our Namor. It's kind of just like a better Jessica Jones uh, to throw Namor into the Kiln. So I really like that. Uh, let's go ahead and do. Let's do our armor on Washington, D.C. just to protect our, our Nightcrawler from anything, just in case. And what else do we got here? We got Hellfire Club. I could do Cosmo, but it, it might be too early for the Cosmo. Like, maybe I... Yeah, maybe, maybe I wait on the Cosmo. I think a problem with me is that I've been playing Cosmo too early. Like, my opponent hasn't played a card yet, so I think I need to wait and try and actually block one of their plays. So for now, I think I'm going to do Lizard in the Hellfire Club. I think that'll be fine. And it's a wave. So this could be Galactus, maybe. It's kind of hard to predict. Is he going to play in the left? Is he going to play in the right? So I think we still go with the Namor play in the Kiln. He could just be playing like Doctor Doom maybe or something like that. Yeah, it is a Dr. Doom, actually. Okay, so Doombot into Washington, D.C. gets buffed. Mm, Claw. We don't really need Claw anymore since we're already winning the kiln unless he has something, something sneaky up his sleeve. So we could either do Sandman or we could do Cosmo plus Colossus. We do have priority, so maybe Cosmo plus Colossus is the better play. So let's go ahead and do that. And our opponent does play into the right location. So let's see if we blocked something from him. And we block a Black Panther. That's really good. That is really good. And our opponent hits us with the I am confident. So it could be an Arnim Zola coming. That's probably what I would predict. And we have Spectrum. I think we just I think we just play the Spectrum, right? That's probably the play. We could do Claw, but we're already we're already winning the kill. I think I think Spectrum is a uh, is the play here. We leave the Nightcrawler here, and I, I think this is I think this is a dub. It is indeed Victory. dub. Cosmo putting in work. That's why I didn't want to play him too early. All right, starting off, we got Sanctum Sanctorum, which is actually not bad for us because I could put Nightcrawler in there. We also have Mister Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and throw Ant-Man in the middle for now, though. I don't think we want to... Probably don't want to show the Nightcrawler too early. He plays a Quinjet. Quinjet. Let's see. Yeah, we'll go ahead and throw the, the Nightcrawler down now, then. And then we can... Uh, we can move it into Sanctum Sanctorum. And we get Cosmo. The thing about this deck is... it's the You're playing cards on curve most of the time, so it's, it's kind of fairly simple to play for the most part usually uh, again before i was saying i like to kind of hold on to the cosmo a little bit but i think we could play cosmo here now yeah i think that's fine we don't have to move the night crawler just yet we could do no more here and then something else in the middle and then claw to feed into the no more location maybe maybe, maybe we just play no more in the middle for now maybe we just play no more in the middle I void Mary along with Quinjet. That is, that is interesting. Okay, so let's. We're gonna move the Nightcrawler. I'm gonna snap. I'm gonna play Lizard here, and then I think we'll finish off with the Orca in the Ice Box. Or we could do Spectrum as well. Spectrum might actually be good, too. Oh, Sarah. 
Spectrum does buff everything here, but I think I kind of actually like the Orca play. I don't know. Spectrum does... It is enough points to get over here, though. So maybe, maybe we just do Spectrum. Okay, we're going to do the Spectrum. I think the Spectrum is probably the, the smarter play of the, uh, of the two. And he's also playing Spectrum. Okay, that was interesting. An ongoing... An ongoing uh, Luke Cage deck. That is interesting. You know, actually, I think I saw... Uh, I think maybe it was like Binks that was playing something like this. So, a uh, good game. But, uh, yeah, Orca would have won this game as well. So, it uh, didn't really matter what we play here. We still would have won. Whether we won Spectrum or Orca. Alright, guys. That is the deck list. Hope you enjoyed. This is a super fun deck. Now, of course, it's going to struggle against Shuri. Because you don't have Shang-Chi. Unless you can get lucky and snipe their Shuri with a Cosma. Which I have done before. But it can be a little bit tricky to predict uh, where they're playing the Shuri. Plus, you have to have priority. So, can be a little bit tricky. Thanos matchups can be hit or miss. Uh, Thanos is not S tier anymore like it used to be but still a very strong deck but anyways guys hope you enjoyed the deck make sure to like and subscribe if you have not already and uh, i would love to see you in my discord server as well so if you want to join the discord server link for that will be in the description down below and uh i need to shout out my member uh john cgi thank you for being a member and supporting the channel and the last thing i want to mention before i sign off the keyword for this video if you stayed all the way to the end, is fish. If you stayed to the end of this video, type in fish in the comments. I know you stayed to the end, and you're a real one for that, and I appreciate you. So thanks again for watching. Appreciate you guys. See you in the next one. Later.